Welcome back to the Fenrir Ridgeback channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Hattie. I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Ridgeback and then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise the perfect Ridgeback. So if you're a lifelong Ridgeback lover, thinking about getting one or you've just started your journey with your new Ridgeback, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell so you never miss a future Ridgeback video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll discuss one of the most amazing guarding dog breeds in the world to see how they are with children and other animals and what you should consider when choosing the right canine companion for your home. So you're thinking about getting yourself a Rhodesian Ridgeback but you have or you perhaps plan to have kids. It's always a good idea to educate yourself and get an idea of how life could be with both. Now the Rhodesian Ridgeback is a large, strong-willed and powerful dog. That in itself doesn't necessarily have to present a problem, depending a bit on how old your kids are. For a toddler, the Ridgeback may be a bit too big and powerful. When the Ridgeback wags his tail, any toddler nearby will be swept away like leaves in the wind. If a Ridgeback came running at full speed, toddlers would fly around in every direction. Rough playing with a Ridgeback will most likely be too much for any kid under the age of 10 to 12 years. Is the Rhodesian Ridgeback safe with kids, you may ask? The answer to that is not one, but twofold. It depends mainly on two things, your dog's bloodlines and ancestry, and how well you raise your dog and your children together. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts that I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behaviour cases in the world, and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels, and maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. But what about the claim that some breeds are better with kids than others you may say? Yes sure some do say that but firstly it comes down to the individuals. The pup's parents, grandparents etc also matters. Did they go well with kids or is there a history of too rough play accidents and or other damage? Instead of trusting generalisation in breed descriptions and trust me they are very general to give you an overall view of a breed please make sure you find a good breeder who can help you by giving in-depth information on their own dogs, preferably as far back as possible. That will give you some inclination on how a future puppy may act and behave around children. More important than that, however, is how you raise your Ridgeback. Socialization is of utmost importance for a dog of this size, of this general temperament and mentality. A Ridgeback is strong-willed, independent, and sometimes quite serious. If you want him to be able to socialize with your children, you need to spend quite some time teaching him how to do it. Equally important is teaching your kids and their friends on how to behave around your Ridgeback. And trust me, this is extremely important. You don't want your children to lack respect of your dog because of these traits I just mentioned. It takes a long time before your child is big, old and strong enough to control your Ridgeback. And for this reason, your child has to learn to respect the dog, when to leave the dog alone, etc. And quite frankly, you're the one who has to teach both child and dog how to behave around each other. It's also your job to supervise their interaction so you can stop anything bad from potentially happening. Does this mean that the Ridgeback is dangerous with kids then? No, not necessarily. He can be just like any dog can be if not socialised and trained properly. Given his size as an adult, his strength and temperament, it's your job to make sure his relation to you and your children works the way you want it to. This goes for raising both child and dog properly. As far as the child is concerned, any child who lives with a dog needs to be taught how to treat the dog calmly, kindly and fairly, and not to tease or abuse the dog. As for the dog, he needs to learn not to be too rough with the child and to listen at all times. Another point to be made is that the Ridgeback is very protective of his own family. Please make sure you remember that when the child has friends over and there's rough play between the kids, your Ridgeback may very well get the idea he needs to protect his child from the others, and all of a sudden you could have an accident on your hands. Again, it's your job to make sure these situations don't get out of hand, so supervision when dog and children interact is absolutely necessary. If I were you, I wouldn't trust any of them until the children are at least 12 years old, and even then, supervision is still advisable. Having a dog of any breed and children is a full-time job, there's no other way to say it. If you want them to work well together, you're the one who's going to have to put in the work. So how about other animals then? 
Well, first of all, remember that your Ridgeback is of a hunting breed. Perhaps not hunting to kill, but still hunting. It's said that a Ridgeback can work well with other animals if raised with them. From that perspective, it may not be an amazing idea to bring in a small kitten to a house where there's an adult Ridgeback who has never seen a cat in his life before. Bringing a Ridgeback pup to a house where there is already a cat or any other animal would probably work a bit better. The more you socialise your dog in his early puppyhood, the better. Confront him with as many different environments, people and animals as possible, and the likelihood that he'll work better with them as an adult will grow considerably. Basically, what I want you to take away from this video is how your dog behaves around children and other animals depends very much on you and what you teach him. Now, instincts can be difficult to train away, but if you share your life with a male Ridgeback, you may want to keep an eye out for other male unneutered dogs since he can lash out for no apparent reason whatsoever. This is one of many good reasons why it's imperative to always be the one in control between you and your Ridgeback. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Ridgeback videos coming here every week so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Ridgeback channel.